Hi, my name is Aubrey Frazita and I'm a fourth year radiology resident at University of Arizona. I'll be presenting a discussion of germinal matrix hemorrhage, including pre and postnatal imaging findings. There are no disclosures for this presentation. Germinal matrix hemorrhage is the most common cause of neonatal intracranial hemorrhage. It is inversely correlated with birth weight and gestational age and more frequently co-occurs with twin gestation and intrauterine growth restriction. Though more often described postnatally with sonography, the same germinal matrix hemorrhages can be observed in fetuses imaged with fetal MRI. The papile burstein classification is a scale commonly used to grade such hemorrhage. There are many indications for fetal MRI, with the most common being incomplete or inconclusive fetal ultrasound. Examples include investigation of thoracic, abdominal, or pelvic masses and evaluation of Potter sequence sequelae. Fetal MRI is most useful at greater than 20 weeks gestation. Neurological indications for fetal MRI are by far the most extensive and most common. Congenital anomalies, vascular malformations, neural tube defects, and conditions impacting prenatal counseling and management can be evaluated, in addition to intracranial hemorrhage. Our patient presented for fetal MRI for further characterization of an abnormality that was noted on 20-week anatomic ultrasound examination. T2-weighted axial and coronal images demonstrate marked right ventricular megaly with poor encephalic changes along the posterior horn of the right lateral ventricle. There is grade 4 right and grade 1 left germinal matrix hemorrhage with right-sided cystic periventricular leukomalacia. Additional fetal MRI axial images demonstrate hyperintense signal on DWI and blooming on GRE within the medial right thalamus, consistent with intraparenchymal hemorrhage. Layering blood products are also noted within the posterior horns of both the right and left lateral ventricles. ADC images, not shown, confirmed no presence of acute infarct. Neonatal MRI confirmed fetal MRI findings and demonstrate progression of germinal matrix hemorrhage over time. Axial GRE and T2-weighted images show marked right ventricular megaly with poor encephalic changes and moderate left ventricular megaly. Blooming signal on axial GRE demonstrates sequelae of intraparenchymal hemorrhage. Comparison images showing the fetal axial DWI and neonatal axial GRE demonstrate decreased size of intraparenchymal hemorrhage, but progression of ventricular megaly between time points. Axial non-contrast CT head obtained a few months after birth demonstrates evolution of intraparenchymal hemorrhage and germinal matrix hemorrhage. There's significant worsening of ventricular megaly with progression of poor encephalic changes to encephalomalacia. Fetal MRI can provide a more specific diagnosis and simultaneously provide more information when non-intracranial abnormalities are seen. Mortality is directly correlated with germinal matrix hemorrhage grade. Consequent non-fatal structural changes of fetal germinal matrix hemorrhage include periventricular leukomalacia and poor encephaly. These alterations can result in devastating postnatal clinical manifestations, including developmental delay, seizures, and cerebral palsy with permanent neurological impairment. Over half of fetuses with postventricular dilation will go on to require postnatal ventricular shunt placement. As such, it is important to be familiar with antenatal germinal matrix hemorrhage. Early detection of germinal matrix hemorrhage by radiologists can provide a vital role assisting clinicians with prenatal counseling and initiation of early postnatal interventions. These are my sources, and thank you very much.